how do you make a standard cost cut? Well, what you're looking at on the screen is the basic format. It's as simple as that. Just follow the format and you get to prepare the standard cost cut just as you can see on the screen. You only need material, labor, variable overheads, fixed, if they're there, of course. And you're yeah, done. You just even sum them up at the end of the day in that column you're seeing called pay units. So how does pay units even come about? So you've noticed what we're doing, how pay unit fact comes about that column, which is K pay units. Like let's, for example, pick on material. You say maybe you find kg per unit because material deals in kgs and then or liters and then you also find the costs per kg that's the k stroke kg the one you see there right when you multiply the two figures that you will find they give you the cost per unit that's how you get that k per unit you're seeing and it even makes sense as we look at an actual example so take a look at the question on the screen Required A is saying from the above information prepare a standard cost card How do you prepare a standard cost card? Remember the format I shared We just follow it All the components are just outlined in that simple format then you're done. So we'll start with material Labor variable overhead fixed then we're done So let's look at material Go to material and a trick for the standard cost card never pick actual result figures. A standard cost card is always based on the budgeted information in simple terms. Any information other than actual results, if you want. Yeah, so as long as you just see that actual results, where as photos don't even go down there and read, we just want any information that is above that statement. Yeah, so we are on material. We are on material. The format said uh, first calculate the kg, the units, or if it's liters, material can be in, in measured in so many things, but in this case it's kgs. First find the kgs per unit according to the format. Where are the kgs? 1 to 75 kilograms, you can see they are up there. Then they said kgs per unit. So usually what you're given in a paragraph is the total kilograms that we are planned. Now you want to find the kg per unit. So how do you do that? So since I've given you the total kgs, and uh, they've also stated the total units available somewhere in the paragraph. Um, you will find that they are mentioned somewhere in the first paragraph up there. The budgeted output for the year is 2550. So it's kg per unit. So it's those kilograms, the total kilograms over total units. That's how you do it. And trust me, I won't get 0 point, um, 0 0.5 kilogram per kg. That's what you're going to get. So at the end of the day, I'm going to show you a screen of how these figures will be coming up. And then if you rewind again the video, we had uh, cost per kg. Just after you find kg per unit, you also find cost per kg. So we're talking about cost now. Cost, what's cost comprised of? You have to find an amount based on material. We're looking at material. Material, they've told us a total cost, which is 51. Okay, as I said, they usually give you overall cost figures. So what you do to find the pay? something you have to divide so 51,000 as the cost since it's a cost pay just know the whatever they put after pay will be the denominator so cost pay kg you divide by the kilograms which is 2550 hence material when you divide 51,000 divided by 2550 you end on 40 yeah you should get a 40 as the cost per kg then there's that column for k per unit you just get to multiply your cost per kilogram sorry cost sorry you multiply your cost per kilogram yes by your kgs per unit to so find that k per unit and i'll show you very soon how this will be done so when now you're calculating the cost per kilogram this is in relation to material you're supposed to get the cost there which is there on material 51,000 divided by the kilograms because the cost per kg is so how many kilograms are there According to the budget, because when you're making a standard cost card, you always pick things which are under the budgeted items. So you divide 1, 2, 75 into 51, you should get 40 kwacha per kg. On for the kilogram per unit, the kilograms were these. So the kilograms were 1, 2, 75 over 2, 5, 50. 
this will give you 0 0.5 kg per unit that's my theory I done then you even go to then I was saying how do you find that column which had k per unit this is what I was saying the kg per unit first I mean the uh, the cost this is cost sorry cost per unit is that the column which had cost per unit how do you find that so you have your kg per unit this one multiply it with the cost per kg that you found together they give you that kg per what which is going to be 20 as of material you're done go to labor okay when you go to labor there you will notice that uh, we have the total labor hours 5 1 what about what are we supposed to do in labor first of all find hours per unit we're just following the format hours per unit which is total hours over total units units are five how much are the units the units sorry they are 2550 so i divide in total hours over total units which is going to give you two hours per unit that's the first step then the labor part goes on and says find the cost per hour how to find the cost per hour so it's a cost you're looking at now go to the labor part specifically on the costs yeah we're picking 102,000. that 102 is a cost now per what per hour so divide by the hours this one will give you you should land on 20 yeah 20 20 kwacha per hour hence there's now that third column which is cost per per unit which are going to just multiply your hours per unit times the what your cost per hour the two you even multiply and find the third column that's the labor part done let me just demonstrate before i come and show you the entire cost card at the end of the day so anyway i was just saying this these were the total hours well at the initial we were supposed to find hours per unit the units are these remember we're just speaking from everything that's above actual results we're not focusing on actual results this is two then i said cost per hour the cost was this cost you pick the cost first pay is always in the denominator pay something that that would be in the denominator per hour this gave us 20. after that we just go ahead now and say this cost per hour multiply it by the hour per unit they give you that figure which goes in the k per unit column the third column in short of the cost card which is what going to give you as 40 so i was trying to say there go to now variable override so one thing you should take note on variable costs is that they also use labor hours when you're determining the hours per unit that's something you should know so when you go to variable override cost when you just uh, okay we just find details on variable override you know first of all you're supposed to still find the hours per unit so since they're using uh, since they're using labor hours hence they'll have the same hours per unit as the one we found on labor because it's as good as dividing the total hours over the total units which is 5 1 over 2 5 50 there were two hours the two hours per unit we found that's the first step it's the same then now they only differ on the cost per hour because now you're looking at variable overheads so variable overheads what they have 15 3 as their cost now it's a cost per what per hour as a variable let's do that so i was saying this is you're finding the cost per hour let's put the cost divided by the hours this is going to give you what three quarter per hour hence put them together to multiply it by three to find that k per quarter this column which is going to give you what six this is under variable overhead you are moving you are going to the last section now which is a fixed overhead now well we're on fixed overhead how do you prepare for of course those figures well for fixed overheads they have to tell you what are they absorbing by are they using hours as well or maybe they're using units just units units so if they're using labels they've stated in fact they stated somewhere below that okay fixed overheads are budgeted using hours labels and since they've told us already that the labels ah, then we already have the labels now these are using labels to absorb fixed costs meaning the preparation of the cost card will be in also in form of the way we treated the labor hours as well it will be like hours per unit since they're using hours so it will be hours per unit as well the first step which is going to be the 5 1 over 2 5 50 it's come back again the same two that you found then you will even find now the next item the next item will be now cost per hour since they're using hours so since you are fixed pick the total cost of fixed divided by the hours okay so we're just following the same cost card huh? this time 
since we're using ours, so even the cost will be also pay her. They've said they're being absorbed in form of what? Oh, the absorption rate, in short, the rate is supposed to be an amount pay, whatever they're absorbing, which is labor hours. Hence, so we're going to the cost to pay her, but under fixed. So fixed is going to be 188700. That's the fixed cost of giving us. What are you dividing that by? Over total hours. So 188700 divided by 5, 1 should give you 37. So let me just show you the calculations on how we're getting all this. So I was saying this. You know, I find in the cost per hour, according to the formats, that over 5, 1. This should land you on what? 37 kwacha per hour. You're done. So you now have, under fix, it's like you have what? The hours per unit. This, the are two. Then there's that part which says at cost per hour, since they're using labor hours. When you multiply these two, you get that K per unit, that column, you get 74. You're done. Then once, you, once you're done with fixed cost, then you get to now like, sum up all those cost per units you found from material. So we find that from material, we had uh, a 20. Labor, we had 40. Variable, we had 6. Fixed just give us 74. All, all of this 140 as the total cost per unit. Then you know if they've also if they stated things like okay, the profit will be so much, you can also include it after finding the total cost now to just complete your cost cut. Yeah, so they've stated something I think in the question. Read that statement there that says the first paragraph that okay. The current year increased the selling price as to have a margin of 30%. They've increased the selling price from it used to be 90, but now they're just telling us that the selling price has increased by what by a margin of 30%. So, okay, margin is a form of profit, and you know, after we find the total cost per unit, you can even include okay, the standard profit is so much, but how do we put in this and also the selling price? Because you can determine the selling price just after you find your total cost and profit. If they are there, selling price is very easy to derive. So, they've given us a margin. It's a matter of working around the information now. So, I was trying to say that if the selling price is not given, like they've just stated that, okay, to increase, to increase by 10 margin. Yeah, what you can do is that since you have total cost, usually we just add it to profit or the margin to give us what's selling. So... Look at the given as margin. Okay, you'll be like, okay, margin has been given as a percentage. Now we want an actual figure that can even help us find this new selling price they'll be using so that we can even include it at the end of our standard cost card there. So if they give you margin, all you have is okay, you know, profit is that it's charged on some cost price, so that you can know what you sell at. That's under normal theory. You want to charge your profits on the cost, so that you can just see if you can sell at a higher price. Now, margin is not charged on costs. That's a rule. You should just know. Yes, margin is a profit, but you do not charge margin on costs unless if it was on sales. Now, sales is not even known. Hence, convert margin to markup. It's thirty percent. First, make it a fraction. Okay. The numerator remains the same. Denominator we subtract that very numerator, leaving us with thirty over seventy. After doing that, this is markup, the 30 over 70. Once you've gotten markup, you can now charge it on the total cost because margin markup, they're all profits. They all denote profit, but we know profit is charged on cost. That's what you just know, but never charge margin. If margin is given to, to represent profit, never charge margin on cost, but first convert. Then you can now charge to know which profit to be used. So it's now markup 30 over 70 times your cost that you found. Yeah, it's supposed to be 140, yes. When you multiply that, it gives you, sorry, 60 as profit, actually, 60. So after finding your profit, which would put as your standard profit there below in the cost card, then you now come and just say this. You have your total costs, now you have your profit, and you can even know the new selling price, which they are going to sell at, plus this additional increase in profit. So it's going to be 140 plus 60 is equal to 200. That will be the selling price. Then you can now just show you now the entire cost card now on another screen on how it looks. Then we're done. So hope everything I was saying now is now making sense according to what you can see on the screen. That's how a standard cost card is prepared. And that's it.